Before I start today's video, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Steve from Random Gaming in HD for sending out this card for review. Without his continued support of this channel, none of these videos would be possible. For those of you unaware of his exceptional content, I will leave a link in the description so you can check out his channel. The RX 5700 XT was released just under a year ago for around £380 or $400, trading blows with Nvidia's more expensive RTX 2070 Super. However, AMD's Navi based GPUs, although capable, had a rocky launch to say the least, with a myriad of driver issues that for some users made the card borderline unusable. Some of these issues included intermittent black screens, system crashes and overall instability, with many users returning their cards for the Nvidia equivalent. But with almost a year of driver tweaks and updates from AMD, have these issues finally been resolved? Well, with my personal setup using AMD's latest drivers, to my surprise I experienced no issues at all. Not to say you will not experience issues of your own, but for me this card worked as expected. The card I have here is Gigabyte's Gaming OC Edition. Despite its plastic shroud, build quality feels solid, and it includes their Winforce 3x cooling system with three 18mm alternate spinning fans, full metal backplate and a simple RGB Gigabyte logo, which can be configured to your liking using Gigabyte's RGB Fusion software. It has 2560 stream processors, a base clock of 1650MHz and a boost clock of 1905MHz. Has 8GB of super fast GDDR6 memory running at an effective speed of 14,000MHz. And it requires just one 6-pin and one 8-pin power connector with a recommended power supply of 550 watts. All games today were benchmarked at 1080p and 1440p running the highest settings possible that allowed for at least 60 frames per second on average. So how does it perform? First up we have Riot Games newest free to play title Valorant, kind of like an Overwatch mix with CSGO type deal. At 1080p we get an average of 224 frames per second with a 1% low of 130 FPS. Bumping up the resolution to 1440p we get an average of 180 frames per second and a 1% low of 106. Definitely more than playable, especially on high refresh rate monitors. Next is the very popular Modern Warfare Warzone, and after a bit of research I found what seemed to be the most popular competitive settings for this game. I will leave a link to a video in the description if you want to copy these exact settings. At 1080p we get an average of 112 frames per second, with a 1% low of 66 FPS. For the most part at 1080p gameplay felt very smooth, with no noticeable stutters or dips in frames. Moving on to 1440p we get an average of 106 frames per second and a 1% low of 62. And again I didn't notice any major FPS dips or stutters. Now probably my favourite of the Battle Royale games, Apex Legends. Once again using the most highly recommended competitive settings I could find online. At 1080p we get 139 frames per second with a 1% low of 84 FPS. Bumping up the resolution to 1440p we get an average of 130 FPS with a 1% low of 58. Just like Modern Warfare Warzone, I didn't notice any noticeable stutters or dips in frames, and it was a very enjoyable experience. Next we have the Red Dead Redemption 2 Story Mode. Using hardware and boxes optimal settings, at 1080p we got 112 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 78. Bumping up the resolution to 1440p, we got a respectable average of 83 frames per second and a 1% low of 60. Gameplay was very smooth at these settings with no noticeable dips in performance. Moving on to Red Dead Online, using the same settings as before, we see very similar performance to the story mode. At 1080p we get 100 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 71 frames per second. At 1440p we get 81 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 61. So Red Dead Online performs a little worse than the story mode, but not by much. Metro Exodus fared better than I expected at the high settings. At 1080p, using the high settings, we got 144 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 87. Moving on to 1440p, we got 118 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 61. Gameplay overall felt very smooth, however I did notice a few dips in frame rate when the action heated up just a little. Shadow of the Tomb Raider up next using the highest settings, at 1080p we achieved 117 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 90. Using the same settings of 1440p we got an average of 85 frames per second and a 1% low of 72. Gameplay was buttery smooth throughout and I didn't notice any major dips in performance or frame rate even in the more built up areas of the game. Monster Hunter World is both CPU and GPU intensive. I have no doubt you'd likely see FPS gains of a higher end CPU, but I think this setup handled it rather well. 
Using the highest settings at 1080p, we're able to achieve an average of 92 frames per second with a 1% low of 71. Bumping the resolution up to 1440p, we achieved an average of 60 frames per second and a 1% low of 47. For a smoother experience of 1440p, you may want to consider lowering a few settings to get a more consistent 60fps, but overall Monster Hunter World actually performed a lot better than I was expecting. And finally, the ever popular Fortnite. Opting to use the epic settings, at 1080p we got an average of 131 frames per second with a 1% low of 70. At 1440p we were able to get an average of 84 frames per second with a 1% low of 59. However, if you want to get the highest frame rate possible, you could always lower a few settings to high or medium. So in conclusion, is the RX 5700 XT finally worth buying in 2020? With most if not all driver issues seemingly solved, the price to performance you get with this card is outstanding. We get comparable if not better performance than the RTX 2070, and with it even trading blows with the more expensive 2070 Super in some titles. If you're looking for a GPU that can handle high refresh rates at both 1080p and 1440p, for £380 or around $400, you'll be hard pressed to find a better value card than the 5700 XT. However, if you're looking for a GPU for content creation too, this is where the 5700 XT falls behind its Nvidia counterparts. Although improved over previous generations, AMD's video encoding, especially for streaming purposes, leaves a lot to be desired. From my testing, it has a larger hit to system resources than Nvidia's codec and image quality is worse too. Let me know down in the comments if you would like to see a comparison between AMD and Nvidia's H.264 codecs for streaming and recording. Well anyway guys that's all for today's video, leave a like if you enjoyed and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.